Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, our guest is Lorna Byrne. Lorna has been seeing angels since she was a baby. She is an international number one best-selling author. Her last two books have gone straight at the number one place on the UK Sunday Times chart. She has more than a million readers around the world. Her books, Angels in My Hair, Stairway to Heaven, A Message of Hope from the Angels, and Love from Heaven have been translated into 30 languages. So if you have not come across these books, you really should read at least all of them uh, because she's an amazing author. Her energy comes through the books and she teaches also how we can feel and connect. So welcome, Lorna. I'm so happy to have you here. Well, it's it's my pleasure. I'm actually delighted to be sitting here in Ireland talking to you, who is probably, it would be a million miles away, I don't know, but the far side of the world. So it's it's very exciting and to have all your listeners listening in as well. You know, so I'm just looking forward to now having this, this chat with you and putting everything into the hands of all of the angels. Yeah. And that makes it all perfect and all right. So you've been seeing angels since you were a baby. How has that changed now that you're an adult? Has the communication changed? Do you feel it differently? How do you receive the communications? Um, no, it, it hasn't changed at all. I, I, I can't see the world in the way you do. I can't imagine what it's like not to see the angels. And um, one thing I can just say is, you know, from the time I was born, I was seeing the angels, but I didn't know they were angels because I was only an infant. And I always remember that first time, you know, that, you know, just lying in the cot and, you know, reaching up there, trying to, to touch, which I believed was part of the family. And in a way, angels are part of our family. Um, it was just when I was maybe, I think maybe I was about two or two and a half and I was playing with my little brother in front of the fire and we were playing with um, blocks, my dad, little wooden blocks my dad had made and our hands touched and it was like as if he, his hand went into mine and mine went into his and it just all sparkled and I remember bursting out laughing and feeling so much love and joy all the wonderful good things and it was then that the angels told me you know that they were angels and I was to keep it a secret and who still to this day I call my little brother and um, who was playing with me in front of the fire, they told me that he had died as an infant. He died at 10 weeks, but yet he was playing with me in front of the fire about, you know, four or five years of age. It's hard to say, you know, he was way older than, than I was. And many a time, even right up to now, I would see him and at different ages, you know, and sometimes I would have seen him, you know, when my mom would be asleep in the chair that used to be in front of that fire. Um, she'd be fast asleep and I would see him as an infant in her arms asleep. But you have to remember, I was only about two or two and a half. And this was all normal, you know, I, I knew no difference. Um, but I think it's just, what would you say? It has touched people's hearts, you know, and has helped people to remember that we're not just human beings, we're spiritual beings as well. We have a soul. My little brother was playing with me and he knew how to play with the bricks. You know, he was talking with me, you know, and yet he had died at 10 weeks. That's wonderful. You know, so again, I think that has always given people such comfort to know that their loved ones mm -hmm. aren't dead. It's only your body that dies. Right. It's your soul that your soul, sorry, my voice, 
your soul that lives. Yeah. You know, um, and I think that's important to to remember. We will all meet our loved ones mm -hmm. when the time comes, and you know they give us so many signs as well. We feel the presence of a loved one more in one sense than we would of an angel. Yes, and that's why I do what I do so that people can understand that. So the angels told you to keep it a secret. When did they tell you that you could go public with this? Oh, gee whiz. Um, very late in, in life, they were always saying to me that, um, you know, one day, Lorna, you will write about God and us. And, you know, as a child, every time they would say that, and as I was growing, I just couldn't understand because I couldn't read or write. And even at that stage, I was, as a child, I was considered retarded. I don't know if I'm even pronouncing the word. I'm severely dyslexic. So I think every child was, you know, if you had any kind of disability in any way, any learning, especially, you were considered retarded. And I know they don't do that nowadays. Um, but at that time, in the 50s, they did. And, you know, they just kept reminding me as I grew, even a teenager, Lorna, one day you will write about God and us. And one very particular time I always recall, and I know I have written it in the book somewhere, is, you know, when I was married and everything. And I had two little boys already, and I had my little daughter in the pram. And I was coming back home and um, walking up the lane, a busy mom like every every mom. And I get a tap on the shoulder. And of course, it was the Archangel Michael. And I always remember getting so annoyed with him. You know, what do you want? I am busy. I'm a mom. Like, I don't have time for this, you know, in that way. And um, he just he just said, I have a message for you. And I always remember my hands on the bars of the pram, you know, and you're feeling it and, you know, they tightening, you know, do you have to give me a message now to get home with the baby? Um, and he just said he, he had a message and, and I just got annoyed and turned around and, and he, he just said, God has said, it's near time for you to write about God and us. And what I said to him that day was, you know, how on earth does God even expect me to write one book when I can't even read or write? Because I couldn't read or write. I couldn't even write my name. You know, I was all my life practicing writing my name. And even today, it's difficult. People wouldn't notice, but it is, you know. And he just said, you know, help would be sent. And... I really never thought about it much afterwards, but I always knew that one day I'd have to say yes, but I wasn't ready to say yes, you know, and that's one thing I love about God. He has such great patience because I was always saying, no, I'm not going to say yes, I'm not going to do this, but in my heart and soul, I knew one day I would have to say yes, and that day did come. And when that day came, you know, it was a knock on the door. Um, as soon as I said yes, things started to change, you know, dramatically. And my husband, Joe, had died beforehand. And I think maybe it was a couple of years later, I'll have to go back and look at ages and things like that. And I just said, yes, OK, I'll do this. But I still couldn't read or write. You have to remember that I couldn't. Um, and I just said to a few people that I knew, which were very few, one special friend, I just said to him, I'm going to write. And he knew I couldn't read or write. Like, I always remember that day, he just looked at me and nodded, like, and that's all. We never brought it up again. And then one day he just arrived at the door and 
friend just said he had something for me. I cut the story short um, and he put two boxes on the kitchen table, had a cup of tea and left and just said those boxes were for me. Didn't tell me what was in them or anything like that. And if you can imagine someone who can't read or write, you know, looking at these boxes on the table, he, why isn't he opening them? Even though they were for me, I expected maybe he should open them because I was very shy. You know, I'm not straightforward like that. And then he left and I just remember opening them. And, you know, it was a, a Dell laptop. Like, I wouldn't have had the money to buy anything like this. It was um, what you call a printer to match the Dell laptop. And, and then there was a speakeasy as well, you know, earphones and all kinds of things. And I just had to smile and laugh and say, well, I don't know what God is up to beyond the angels because I don't know what this is <laughs> in that way. And then I just, um, skipping loads of time, had said to someone else that I knew a husband and wife, and I said to them, you know, I've been given this present and I don't know how to use it. How could I? And I, I told them I can't read or write. Um, I'm severely dyslexic. And that man just worked a miracle. He just fixed it up. And whatever way he done it, he said, Lorna, you just press that one button. I mark the button for you, <laughs> you know, and you speak in and it will print out for you. That's all you have to do. And then he showed me where I press another button to save it. And that's all you have to do. It's all there then. And that's what I do today. Like if my computer or anything changes on it, I can't use it. I have to ring for help straight away. Where normally maybe, you know, you would have no problem maybe, you know. No, I would have a problem. <laughs> Adam happens not mine. It's it's crazy. And electric things seem to have a what does my eldest son say? Um, keep mom out of the room. I don't want any of my equipment whacked up. <laughs> yeah. I think that happens around a lot of us who do any kind yeah. of channeling or connecting with the other yeah. side because the energy is just so great. So Mary is considered the queen of angels. Do you yeah. also see Mary coming through to you? Yes, on, on many occasions. I know I haven't written very much because I have to get permission from God to do so. Um, so I'm hoping that I will get permission over the next few years to do a little more on that. I, I know I have um, spoke of the Queen of Angels, Mary, in one of my books as well. Um, and to me, that was great comfort for me in, the, in that way. But as, as I say to everyone, you know, God is real and the angels are real, you know, um, and all our loved ones are real as well that have, have died and left us, but yet they're still here spiritually. And I think that's just something we cling to and we're hoping. And all as I can do is tell you it's true. Do the angels give you messages for other people or just globally or just yourself? Well, it, it seems to be for me, really, it's globally. It's, it's for the world. It's not just, you know, for me or any individual. It's, it's for the world. Um, as I just say, I'm not a fortune teller. You know, I could, I could know something about someone, but that's intruding. If God and the angels tell me something, if a lady told me something, that doesn't mean that I go and tell this person, mm -hmm. I know this about you, you know, I know what's going to happen to you. Because it was like, you know, my husband, Joe, um, and like with many other people, but I'll use my husband, Joe, as an example. I knew even before I got married that he would die before I would, he would die younger. And I knew exactly what would happen, but I couldn't go to him and say, 
you're going to die again a certain age and all of this is going to happen before. When you do that, you're stopping someone living their life because things could change. Mm -hmm. could change things. Yeah. And I'm not allowed to overstep those boundaries. Yeah, I totally agree with you. When I'm doing readings with people and they want to know the future, my answer is, I don't know. I mean, we have free will. You could decide to make a right or a left yeah. and change everything I'm saying. And also, it's also the power of suggestion. You tell something to somebody and they, they believe it and they make it come true. And I don't think that's what anybody wants well, to do in this life. I, I don't think you should interfere in someone's no. life. Some, sometimes when somebody might be ill, I might say, you know, you should go for, you know, go and, and see the doctor complain about what you're complaining about, what's, what's irritating That's you. not predicting. That's just how it's not predicting. No, that's just here. Go to the doctor, will you please? Right. Right. In, that, in that way. And well, because I, I think we can all change the world in a positive way, in the sense of changing ourselves as well. So you know, given, and that's where we have to start. So given that we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, have the angels yeah. given you any messages about what this is all about, why this is happening? Well, let's say, what way would I put this? Um, we can't say why is this happening? What is it all about? Because each and every one of us really know we actually, the answer is inside of us. We have become so materialistic and selfish and mean, all those words you want to use that we think life is really only about, you know, all those material things. And we have forgotten the most important things in life itself. And one big thing that we have forgotten is our planet you know, all of that other life that we don't think is life, but it is life, you know, and I know we will get through this pandemic, I can't say pandemic, um, but we have to change. And we all know that personally, yet a lot of us are in denial of it. And you know, our guardian angel and all of the angels are telling everyone in the world this all of the time. You know, but it's hard for us, you know, and my heart goes out to everyone. It's, you know, I don't know how much we'll have to change, but I believe we will have to make start to make big steps. And, and it, everyone has to um, play their part, not just, you know, our governments, not just the big companies. But I think the people of the world, and that's you and me, mm -hmm. we have to kind of, you know, push them to make the right decisions so that our children will have the beauty that we have around us, you know, and um, that we don't destroy it all. And um, so, so that we can live, it's like life is, what's the word, checking, checking life. You know, the balance has to has to be kept. And I believe we can keep the balance because God tells me, the angels tell me we can do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and we'll probably later on discover that all of this, even though our hearts have been torn apart with God, the amount of people that have died because of it. But I do believe in the future, we will see the miracle that's there, that's in disguise miracle we can't see at the moment yeah that that, that's that's beautiful and i um and i'm happy that you know we have the angels behind us pushing us forward in this so can you give anyone tips you know give my audience tips about how they can communicate with the angel realm um well let's let's say everybody that is listening you know believes in their guardian angel but in a sense you're doubting you know you're saying I do believe in my guardian angel but every day you're looking for proof and that is the the human side of us we're looking mm -hmm. for proof we're doubting that we are a spiritual being as well that we have that soul 
that spark of light of God that's in us. Um, and that our guardian angel is there. It's the one angel that cannot leave you for one second. It's, it's the gatekeeper of your soul. And the first thing I would say to everyone, you know, you might be saying you believe, okay, but you are doubting slightly, like, because as I said, everyone is looking for proof. But try and take another step. Try and say to yourself, I will do my best not to doubt today. Every day say that, today I won't doubt. No matter what happens on that day, no matter how good or how bad I feel, I won't doubt. I think that's a big step to take, but yes, you can take it whatever size you want. And maybe every morning say good morning to your guardian angel and I'd say ask for a sign and the most common sign is a feather. So I'm sure millions of your listeners um, have already received feathers, you know, and a feather doesn't have to be white. It can be any color because it depends on the part of the world you're in or what birds are around. Or I always have to smile what feather an angel can get to float in your direction or to be in the place the angel wants it to be as well. It's not, you have to remember, angels are, you know, creatures created by God. You know, they're, they're not flesh and blood like us. They can't pick up a feather in the same way. They have to get it to move there somehow or get someone else to carry it unknowns to them and drop it there you know um, and I have to smile because it was like the other day you know myself I was given out to the angels I was saying you know sometimes you make it very difficult for the person to find the feather you know for the feather to appear and the next minute when I was walking across the barn I felt something sticking in my foot and I said what on earth is that you know, I thought it was a bit of, you know, something, you know, that shouldn't be there. But you know what it was? A feather. A small little feather, only about that size. And what would you say? The pinprick it was giving me got my attention in that way. Um, so kind of help yourself to believe another little bit and ask for those signs. And sometimes you know the most common sign grant you is a feather but sometimes somebody i would often say ask for a flower but sometimes they ask for a bunch of flowers and that's even harder for the angels because they have to get someone to send you a bunch of flowers and lots of us don't listen you know no point saying you do listen but lots of the times mm -hmm. we don't you know a thought comes into our head about Mary or John or, or somebody, maybe you haven't seen them in years. And for the last six months of the last year, their thought of them coming into your mind has been constantly. And it could be that you were to just pick up the phone and give them a call because they were looking for a sign of hope. Or maybe it was you were getting, you know, that feeling and flowers for some reason or send them something. You didn't know it, it hadn't dawned on you yet. Maybe it was flowers. But a lot of the times we say no. We don't bother listen to what the angels are asking us because I suppose we're more fo focused on ourselves, you know, so, so we miss it. Um, but that's what I would say. If a thought comes into your head, you know, Maybe give that person a ring, even if you weren't talking with them, even if you had a row with them years ago, but for some reason they're crossing your mind and you know they're still in this world. You know, you could be saving their life by just making that call. You know, it doesn't mean that you have to go out and have tea with them. It doesn't mean you have to become best friends. You're just ringing. And I think this virus is giving us a great opportunity to mend bridges yeah. but we're not taking that opportunity as much as we should 
you know, so maybe that would be a thought for everyone. So I'm telling everyone's guardian angel who will be listening to this, you know, put a thought into everyone's head to mend a bridge somewhere that is within their lives, whether it's an old friend or family or a neighbor down the road, whatever. I also think the pandemic has slowed us down so that we're able to be more aware because we're, no, we're not all caught up in the busyness of life and planning and going here and going there. Oh, Most of us are in home, you know? And so there's, there's a, a, an awareness, a soul awareness and an opening up to the spirit realm, whether it be angels or God or spirit guides or whatever it may be, because a lot of this is just slowing down, getting out of our minds and into our hearts. So that's, I think, a wonderful thing that has come out of this pandemic. Just a question, do the guardian angels choose us? Do we choose them? Does God choose them for us? How do we get our guardian angels? You, you would have got your guardian angel before um, you were conceived when you were a soul in heaven your guardian angel was appointed to you. And what I call the sea of souls is where you met your guardian angel. And at the moment of conception, your guardian angel came with you, you know, and was right there with you, whether you stayed or not, or even whether you were aborted or not. Um, your guardian angel is always your guardian angel and can never be anyone else's. Yeah, I love that. I love that there is that personal connection. So given all that you do and the books that you've written, you've, you've moved into writing children's books. Um, why did you decide to do that? Um, how can I answer that? Um, it is just, again, something that the angels always said, you know, one day, you know, you'll write about God and us, but they told me as well, I would write a children's book and to write more than one. Um, so again, it was when I said I was ready, you know, God is always saying to me, you know, why are you hiding from me? You know, I do constantly. I say no constantly. Um, I give out constantly to God and the angels, as I told you, giving out to Archangel Michael on that day. Um, so the children's book, I suppose, came about because of things slowing down during this time, this is when it was written, you know, and got it up, got it published as well. Um, and again, it's, it's, it's to help children to recognize that they have a guardian angel to give them hope, you know, in themselves, to give them confidence in themselves, to, to know that they're, they're not alone. And the name of the book is a very special name because it's my guardian angel, my best friend. And again, that was a child because children have told me so many stories, you know, and because they knew they had a guardian angel, it gave them that hope and confidence. You know, they were able to get through it. Um, and this, this young, young boy who just, you know, stood up in the audience and just said, I don't have a question. I just want to tell you, Lorna, my guardian angel is my best friend. And that's why the book is, is called that. Oh, that's um, and of course, he did ask for something else. He, he, he asked for the gift of life. And um, so it's, it's to me, it's a, it was hard writing the book as thinking of him as well. But none of the stories in the book are relating to him at all. Um, another day I will write about the time I spent with him, you know, and how spiritual this, this young child was. You know, I always give out to God for, for taking those that are so pure from us, you know, but I don't think we are ready to hold on to those that are so pure just yet, but we are getting there. I think so it's wonderful. I would love, I would love, you know, um, every parent, if possible, to give this children's book to, to their child or even read it with them and talk to them about it. I'm hearing back quite a bit from children, you know, that have read the stories and what it has meant to them. 
And I think it's important that children at a young age are exposed to this because they're our future. You know, um, and we're not just here, you know, to work and earn money, but we're spiritual beings. And, you know, the younger they are, the more we can help them along that path, the better it will be for humanity. And so thank you for for doing that. And that book can be found on Amazon, correct? As well as your other books. Um, do you have a website that people can go to? Yeah, I have. Um, I, I think it's called I'm Hopeless for This Part. You know, um, I think if you look up Angel or you look up Lorna Byrne, um, you will you will find, find me as such. I always ask her on that and I always forget what way should you say that? I can't put it together. You know what? It's just a matter of Googling. I'm sure it's yeah. wannaburn.com, you know, because yeah, that's, that's something like that. <laughs> yeah. So that people can find you. And when the pandemic is over, when you start, you know, appearing, whether it's in Europe or whether it is here, you know, they can come and, and be with you and, and hear you speak um, in person. But personally, I think Zoom is wonderful because it connects us. It does. It's it's absolutely great, and I'm I'm myself so happy with it that I can talk to to people like yourself, you know, um, and that's so important to to help to give others hope and belief that they have a guardian angel and they have a soul, and you know that God is real and that you don't just die and wash away in the ground, you know, you live forever, mm -hmm. you know. So we've we've got so much to learn and so much to do with our guardian angel to help us to make that contact stronger and of course all of the other angels that come and go and even the souls of our loved ones that are in and around us all of the time and yet they're in heaven sometimes i find that myself an irish word we would use would be boggling you know that means how can they be in heaven and right here with me as well but but they are, and, and they're so beautiful, they're so perfect. You know, your loved one is, how would I say, is more than an angel ever could be because they're a soul. Yeah, that, I hope I'm not saying too much. I, I get know, carried I away. That, no, I think that, um, and you say it so beautifully because it's true and they're all around us and they help us because that love never, ever dies. So they're here yeah. to to teach us, to protect us, to help us feel, to continue to be in our lives. And it's just, you know, that's such a feeling of, that is unbelievable, you know, that when you feel that and you know they're around and they haven't gone, it gives us hope to go on, the fortitude to go on and, and to help calm us and to listen to them. They want us to listen and to communicate. You know, I always say to people, just talk, just talk. You know, you don't have to be saying the yeah. prayers over your religion if you want to, sure, but you don't have to just have a conversation because they hear you and they hear your heart. And that's what's so important. It has been absolutely wonderful speaking with you today. I thank you so much. Um, for all my listeners, I, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If so, please like, share, and comment, and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode. You can go on Amazon, you can find Lorna's books. I mean, I absolutely love um, Feathers in My Hair. Um, I think that's just a beautiful, beautiful book that should be on everybody's um, bookshelf. So if you haven't read that or her other books, pick them up. They are, they really are very touching. And um, I thank you all for listening. And I thank you, Lorna, for being on today. God bless. Thank you. And thank you to all of your listeners. And it's angels in my hair, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. The angels just said, correct it there, Lorna. And I said, okay, I will do that. But thank you to you and all of your listeners. And um, thank you so much and bless you all.